Hey folks, quick one today, uh, talking basically about some projector maintenance. So I have a JVC NX7. It's been hanging in my theater since pretty much those units shipped. I was, I think, amongst the first wave of pre-orders uh, to, to get them. They were delayed when they were first announced from Cedia, but I got mine the following spring. So I think we're going on something like four-ish years now. And I have to admit, I've never really done any maintenance on it. So I've been using it that whole time. I mentioned in the live stream that when I bought my projector, I did get a free bulb. It was a promotion for the fact that the NX models shipped so much later than the pre-orders uh, when they were made. Just recently here, I went ahead, I replaced the bulb. I took a look at the uh, air intake filter to see if that needed to be cleaned and a couple of other realignment things. Basically just again, projector upkeep. So I thought I'd reflect on that a little bit. First off, let's talk about the bulb. So in the time that I've had the NX hanging, I'd, I'm just shy, just shy of 1,100 hours on that bulb, 1,073. A lot of that time probably is high lamp hours versus low lamp hours. Mostly I have been watching, I would say, more 4K HDR type content, usually than not. And even lately, because of the age of the bulb, I've been running high lamp pretty much across the board anyway. Did I really need to replace the bulb? I would say not really. I probably could have gone quite a bit longer, at least to some number of hundreds of hours, if not maybe several hundred hours. And, and Ben, I think, okay with the level of light that the projector was putting out. So I want to make that clear because I had already responded to some comments from my community post. I didn't necessarily replace the bulb, I would say, because I felt this overwhelming need or desire to. I did it because... If I really think about where my projector roadmap is going to take me, I think I'm probably going to have a new projector, let's say maybe within a year, certainly by the end of next year, maybe 18 months, or maybe just waiting for the next models of JVC. I don't know. But in any case, I'm, I'm going to put nowhere near another thousand, thousand hours, uh, probably on the same projector, on the same bulb. And I already had the new one. I already had it sitting here. It's been sitting here for a while. So I figured, why should I basically degrade the bulb use it at a lower brightness for my use over the next whatever that is 12 to 18 months or so maybe then change it to a brand new bulb at its peak brightness and then sell it to somebody else why should i not use it for that next stretch of time with the maximum brightness that i can get out of it for the best performance best picture and all of that in my theater so that that kind of predicated doing the swap now again if all else being equal i would have probably been more than fine to go ahead and just use the bulb put some more hours on it and use it as is. The bulb that came out is fully functional and working. So even if something happens with the one that I put in there, I am holding on to this, the old bulb is in the box. But if I ever have to revert back, I got a perfectly decent bulb here that I can put back in. It's a backup, I'll hang on to that. Probably even still sell that with the, with the projector later on so that the next person has it as a backup. It's better than just basically making waste out of it prematurely. The operative thing that I wanted to know is what is the value of changing that bulb at roughly 1100 hours? So I went ahead and bought myself a light meter. This thing was like 30 bucks, $33 or so, give or take on Amazon. This is the light meter model MT912. Of course, I am, I am an Amazon affiliate and I'll have a link in the description if you would like to buy this meter. Pretty basic operation. We got a photo sensor there and a digital readout. Basically put it in the light path that you want to measure and it tells you a brightness reading in lux. Lux can be converted to lumens based on uh, conversion factors and formulas. There's web pages that basically do the calculation for you. You put in the square footage of the area that the light is being distributed across and you put in the lux number. So in terms of measuring, I just use the Apple TV. If you go into the video settings menu of the Apple TV and you scroll down to the bottom, they have calibration patterns. I just put up the multicolor calibration pattern and measured right in the middle of the big white box that's kind of on the bottom left of the screen. And of course, I measured before and after changing the bulb. And so the interesting, probably the most interesting part of this video is what's the difference between an 1100 hour bulb and a brand new one? Well, as shown in the pictures here with this meter, I was reading 288 lux with the 1100 hour bulb. And with the new bulb, 353 lux. So if we do the math, we take 353, Divided by 288, we get rounding up, we get a 23% increase in light output. More than I expected, quite honestly. Um, that's pretty considerable. I haven't actually sat down and watched a movie or re ran back some content that I'm familiar with on the new bulb yet. I'll be doing that hopefully soon. In preparation of filming this, I'll be gone for a few days. But after I get back, hopefully putting some time in the theater there, 
I'm really curious what difference that makes watching some bright content, some nice bright HDR content, but just looking at the menus and a little bit of tinkering around after actually changing the bulbs, I, I think that was pretty tangible. That was pretty impactful. And just being in the room, looking at essentially the Apple TV UI uh, menu in light mode, it, it felt pretty considerably brighter, almost 25% uh, increase in brightness. So what does that mean? Well, I guess if you've got a bulb-based projector and you're getting up past 1,000 hours, 1,200, 1,500, certainly 1,800 hours, uh, you might want to think about you might want to think about the value proposition uh, of a new bulb. It d definitely makes me Jones more uh, for a projector upgrade sooner, getting something that would be up there in like you know the high end 3,000 lumen uh, light cannon range, and the difference that that would make in my room uh, and on my screen. So all in all, again, changing that bulb, it's an easy win. I had it. I should be the one to benefit from it, not the next lucky owner uh, of my NX7. As it is, based on the amount of hours that we're actually able to put in the theater room on the projector, by the time I sell this thing, it won't be anywhere near 1100. That bulb will st still be relatively new, and I will, again, sell it with a backup coming with it as well. The other thing that I want to comment on uh, that in the owner's manual they tell you every once in a while, I don't remember what the specific guidance was, but at least in the case of this JVC, there's a couple of little tabs on the back. You, you unclip them, flip it open, and there's an air filter. Of course, the air intake comes in from the back, blows through to cool everything, and blows out the front. Like any uh, fan-based cooling system, it's going to pull in dust. It may pull in debris and other things. And so there's a recommended maintenance that says, hey, take that uh, little foam filter out every once in a while and clean it out. And I'll admit, like maybe many of you watching, I've never done it. So that, that filter has basically been blocking dust and blocking particles for some number of years uh, without ever being cleaned. And But interestingly, like was the filter dirty? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't really at all. So I grabbed the compressed air blower that I had recently bought. I made some video content about that. I've been using that to kind of clean and maintain a variety of things around the AV system and around the house. Blew the filter out from basically the inside uh, out. So the dust that would have been collected coming in would have been blown back out. And I didn't even really see a thing. So, hey, I guess the filter's clean, but I, I don't think it, it really needed it. In my case, my theater room, uh, it's in a basement and it's, it's always door, the, the entry doors to that room, 100% always closed, uh, only open to basically go in and go out. We've got pets, and I don't want I don't want the cats ever basically getting in to the theater room and running around. So I think the amount of like dust and debris and air turnover uh, and stuff that we get in there is is really really low. Um, I also do run uh, an air purifier in there. So every once in a while, usually after we use the room, I'll turn it on. It'll run a some hour cycle, turn itself off. So that room overall is pretty clean. That projector has only ever been used uh, in that room itself. It's actually over, only ever been taken out one time uh, where I took it to a, a local Michigan theater meetup, a projector shootout. Uh, but other than that, inside that room, hanging uh, up on the, the ceiling mount, um, in the back of that room, closed door room, has been the only place that projector has ever been operated. I, I guess that kind of tells us a little bit that maybe we don't need to be so concerned about cleaning the filters, <laughs> depending on the room structure and the logistics and all of that uh, of where you run your projector. The other thing that I did, and something I want to develop a little bit better of a methodology for, is because I had the new masking panels and I was disturbing the projector, certainly knocking it even more out of alignment than it might have already kind of naturally drifted or from last summer when they redid the sewers and they redid our street and our house was shaking like an earthquake. I figured I would try to do a little bit of realignment. And that part just makes me realize how much I hate ceiling mounts. Um, it's just such a pain. There, there's so many axes of motion and trying to adjust one is, is skewing the other uh, and trying to just get the projector completely aligned in all of the different dimensions that it can move. I'm really Jones and I think to have some kind of a uh, hanging shelf or shelf suspended from the ceiling where instead of having the projector suspended upside down with so much axis of motion, I could instead have a very fixed, very level side to side, front to back shelf, put the projector on it, maybe even use that to hush it up a little bit. But ceiling mounts, they can really be a pain. So I'm curious, if you have your projector on a ceiling mount, do you have any methodologies by which you kind of very uh, specifically measure or square your projector, true it up to your screen? Because I have to admit that I was struggling, like trying to 
get the right kind of side to side, up and down, and then re reassess all the stretching. If I could get one side to align very nicely, some other one was off. I think I might spend some more time on this uh, another day. I do have like a laser-based digital uh, tape measure, measuring device. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe like squaring the projector up kind of side to side and top to bottom, there's a way that I could use this and measure distance like on one side of the projector versus the other side, at least to get some of the left and right um, kind of squared up. So yeah, that's that. I think I'm pretty excited about some of the minor tweaks that I've been making lately into the theater, like just moving the subwoofers, having such an impactful uh, difference in the bass and the audio of the room. Now getting 25%, 23% more brightness out of the projector, the masking panels uh, and all of that. Man, I'm really excited to get in there and watch some movies. So what other little trip tips, tricks, tweaks, and so on uh, have you been maybe tinkering around with that have been impactful in your room? Have I inspired you to go price projector bulbs? Uh, perhaps you're gonna be replacing the, the bulb in your projector based on this data and these results. And if you wanna measure it, hey, get yourself one of these little meters. Um, I've been, been wanting to buy one of these for a while and just that one little measurement alone and the peace of mind that I got some value out of this bulb change uh, makes 30 bucks on the meter kind of more than worthwhile. So thanks so much for watching. Please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, share the video, comment, and so on. And if you'd like to support the channel, uh, there's super thanks, there's memberships, there's a sh affiliate shopping, links to Amazon and audio advice. I very much appreciate anything, of course, that you're willing to do. Thanks so much for watching. Coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.